Alright, um, hello. Welcome to my fourth requested tutorial. And here we're gonna answer this question here. Well, it's not a question, but whatever. Uh, I hope you can write tutorial about 2D animation in LibGDX with Texture Packer. So let's have a look at that. Um, I'm not gonna write it, because I'm recording it right now, but I hope that's okay. Um, with Texture Packer, I guess he means texture packer. Um, well, the texture packer, um, I already talked about that in... Don't ask me which tutorial that is. I think it's episode 5, right there. And, you know, if you watched episode 5, uh, I think you should be familiar with the texture packer. Because you basically just have to put the textures in and, well, that's it. Where now the interesting part comes, um, 2D animation. And yeah, sure, I can do that. Um, so I had a look around, and right now we're in um, a new project. This project is uh, uh, as far as it comes. Yeah, that's really oops. weird. Okay, shut up. <laughs> it was myself. So as far as it comes, this project is empty. We just use a new screen, which we're gonna call animation tutorial yeah that's good and then we create the class and that's alright that's alright that's alright that's alright and so there we go um, this is just gonna be about the animation so we don't need anything fancy we just need something to actually uh, draw the animation on and that's gonna be a sprite batch as usual Um, then we want to clear the screen as we usually do. GL clear color 0001. GDX.gl.gl clear. GL 2.0.gl color. Buffer bit as usual. And then we can go ahead and create the sprite batch. Batch equals new sprite. Oops. Sprite batch. And dispose it. Um, now we're ready to draw something. If we just put batch.begin, batch.end, okay, you know that stuff. So, I had a look around and I saw that there already is this class called animation, which is already provided by libgdx. So I thought, that's a pretty cool class. We probably want to use that. So let's create an animation. Um, when you import it, make sure you select the 2D animation. Otherwise it's 3D and that's not what it's about, you know. Um, okay, so let's create a new animation. Equals new animation. And now we see the constructors we have. And one of the constructors here, well they're pretty much all the same. Um, very interesting thing is this constructor here. It's the simplest one. Yeah, it's the simplest constructor. Constructor. At first, we say, how long should each frame of the animation be displayed? And let's say it's gonna be. I don't know how well, how you pronounce that one thirtieth. I, I have no idea, but um, well, you know what that is. Um, and then we have to put in some texture regions, which are going to be the frames, they call keyframes, whatever. Let's just create new texture region, new texture, because the texture region constructor takes a texture, as you can see here, so new texture. And then we're going to put in um, image ball or png, just some textures I have. This is going to have um, three frames. So we create three of these. Um, Japanese flag. Just some stuff I've got in my assets folder right now. And another one. Some image. 
Rockstar.png. Fine. So now we've already got an animation set up. Looks uh, pretty simple. We've defined how long every frame should be displayed and all the frames that should be displayed. Um, okay, let's actually have a look in the animation class to see what's going on. Looks, uh, er, um, oh my god, what's that again? But it's actually pretty simple. At first, let's um, collapse all these things. So it's that's nicer, isn't it? Um, and here in the outline, we see it even and uh, even nicer. Um, at first, it's got a few play modes. Um, I think that's self-explanatory. Normal, it just plays and that's it. Reversed, it plays in the other direction. It, and loop, it's looping and whatever. Um, and then it's got the keyframes that we set. Uh, where is it? Here. All the texture regions that we put in, uh, they are going in this text region array called keyframes. Then the frame duration and the animation duration, which is, um, well, all the uh, keyframes make up the animation duration if you take them times frame duration. You know what that is, <laughs> how long the animation takes. Um, and then the play mode that is um, currently set. So then we got a few constructors. Uh, one of them takes an array of whatever extends texture region. Uh, this one here does the same, but it also takes the play type that's supposed to um, well uh, be set here. So, uh, well, the play type, you know. Uh, and this one is what we use. We can put in as many texture regions as we want. So we put in every frame. Um, single, every single frame we put in just like that. So now the interesting methods. Set play mode, um, pretty self-explanatory. We just set the play mode to one of these above. Um, is animation finished? Uh, well, that tells us if at a time that we pass in, um, the animation would be finished. And keyframe. Now that's the interesting things. We got get keyframe, get keyframe uh, again, and get keyframe index. So get keyframe index would return. Yep. Where is it? There. Um, you d we don't have to read this all. I didn't read it myself, but get keyframe index returns the current frame number. So if you put in like a time, like uh, one for one second, uh, one second, then we would know which um, index of uh, the keyframe array that would be at this time. Um, then we get get keyframe with boolean looping. So if the um, if the animation is looping uh, and at the current time is what we put in there, and then we get which keyframe would be the one that is displayed at the moment. And then the simplest one here, um, get keyframe at a specific time. So that's pretty much what we want to use. Um, we say how much time has passed and then the animation tells us how it's looking at the moment. Um, I hope I didn't confuse you now. I kind of confused myself, but whatever. Um, so what we want to do is we want to draw the animation. Um, to do that, we say batch.draw, and we got a lot of stuff here. Let's just take the simplest one. It's just about the animation. So texture region um, is going to be animation dot get keyframe. There we are again at a specific time, and that is a time that we are going to um, well create. This is, uh, and it should be increased by the delta every time this updates. Otherwise the time stays the same and the animation stays the same, that makes no sense. And just draw that somewhere on the screen. So let's create this time variable private float time uh, and yeah, that's it. We can already test it.
Uh, yeah, that was an animation. It didn't look like one, but um, it's currently set to play mode normal. So this means it runs through the animation and then stops because it has reached its end. So we want to go to animation and say that the play mode is supposed to be animation dot loop. So now it's going to loop all the time. And yeah, that's already an animation. Isn't that great? <laughs> um, the 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 pictures all have different sizes right now, so we can't really talk of an of a really good animation. But this is fine for us. Um, we can do whatever we want with it later, anyway. So yeah, that's pretty much the animation class that libgtx gives us. Um, pretty simple if you know that it exists and you read uh, what's in the outline here once it's pretty self-explanatory but I thought about something better and um, I thought an animation is pretty much like a sprite you also take a sprite and you draw it using the sprite batch um, yeah that's pretty cool so I thought why not just make an animated sprite and so um, I went ahead and did that. All we need to change now is that we don't need this time variable anymore. That's uh, one of the important points why I did that, because it sucks to have a time variable for every animation in your game. Like, I don't know, imagine you have 5,000 enemies that are running um, after your character and you would need 5,000 time variables or an array of 5,000 uh, variables to keep track of the times that their animation has and th that would totally suck that not impossible that's not possible so instead we wanna use a animated sprite animated oops animated sprite okay uh, of course, this class is not available for you right now because I wrote it. But it's going to be after the tutorial. I'm just going to put the link in the description. Animated sprite uh, animation. So now we still got our animation. And we are going to put this animation in a new animated sprite. So animated animated sprite equals new animated sprite and that takes an animation and yeah we now put this animation that we created uh, in the animated sprite so it's pretty much a sprite with information on what to display at which time um, the animated sprite if we have a look into that uh, has this time variable itself so we don't have to take care of it every time, like I just uh, said. Um, yes, yeah, so now we got our animated sprite, and we can just draw it like a normal sprite. If we don't put any typos in here, animated sprite dot draw batch. Um, yeah, you can use any draw methods that sprite already uh, provides and that's pretty much this one and you know, animated sprite dot draw um, the other one it's just two so whatever just draw it like a normal sprite and it will take care of updating and drawing itself pretty simple um, yeah we can already test that as well and we have the exact same thing that we had before just that uh, even if we created a ton of animated sprites we don't have to create a ton of uh, animation times there uh, so yeah that's the point of it uh, yeah okay so I'm gonna put the link to the animated sprite uh, in the description and you can use it for whatever you want uh, just I don't know don't even have to mention me in some credits or whatever. It's it's a really simple class. Um, yeah. If you want to read all this, you can do it. It's really not complicated. I'm just going to go with this real quick. Um, let's 
collapse them all and there we go. At first we have the animation that we put in the constructor. Uh, yeah, it contains all the animation information, so how long should every frame be and whatnot. Um, then the time that has passed since the creation of this uh, animated sprite. Then we have a boolean if it's playing, if it's automatically updating itself every time it's drawn and if it's keeping the size. So about keep size, that's actually pretty cool. Um, let's show that to you. Animated sprite, and I can type sprite dot keep, oops, dot set keep size to true. It's not enabled by default. And now we see the frames all keep uh, the size of the first frame that we put in. So we put in the ball, now they all have the size of the ball. Usually if you create an animation, uh, for example of a character, all the images have the same size as well. So it doesn't matter uh, if the size is adjusted or not. But just because we can, I put it in there. Um, yeah, then it's got this update method which pretty much just um, says if this thing is playing we want to set the new uh, thing the new the new <laughs> thing the new um, yeah image that should be displayed also we want to increase the time and if uh, the size should be adjusted then yeah we adjust the size so <laughs> yeah it's it's not too complicated I think then we got all these standard things like play sets playing to true, pause, sets playing to false, stop, pauses, and then goes to zero for the time. It's a uh, seek zero, pretty much just sets the time to zero. <laughs> That's all just really basic stuff. Um, yeah. We can get the animation that we put in, we can set the animation. Like I said, it's not too complicated. If you've got any questions, even if it's uh, looking simple and you suddenly think, oh, what's that? Uh, just ask me. But yeah, I think this should be okay. I don't want to talk 20 minutes about this now. Um, hopefully this gives you an idea of how to use animated sprites uh, and animations in general in LibGDX. Um, there's other approaches to make animated sprites. Let me just show you that. Um, if you go to the Bad Logic forum, which uh, is badlogicgames.com slash forum, um, you can go into libgdx contributions and there we got another animated sprite. I didn't try it out because it didn't really work for me and whatever. Um, so I put mine under there and and yeah, maybe this one is better, maybe it's not, I have no idea. Mine is just really basic, so it gives you a basic idea of how to do that. So yeah, thanks for watching and um, hopefully see you next episode.